So what does all this mean for costs? Something I've read a lot about is that BIM saves money. The UK government has got a target of we're going to save 20%. It's crap. Right? And the reason that it's crap is because it's about a supply chain. If I go along to a subcontractor today and I say, hey, we've got this building and it's, it's designed in 3D, it's going to be a really, really efficient building. You need to give me a, a lower price. You won't get a lower price. He hears that every other day. Basically, what needs to occur is uh, our, our industry needs to get used to the construction goes smoothly and then price will come down. Um, so it takes time for these things to occur. You won't see a, a saving in the, at the first instance. The next thing is to understand where money is on a construction project. Right? So where are savings made? There can be a lot of focus on head contractors, but they really, they don't control the lion's share of the work. There's about 83% of every project sits with subcontractors. If you don't have them involved, you're not going to make significant savings. Um, and similarly, if you're negotiating with a head contractor, it's about uh, his preliminaries and, and maybe his profit margin, which is bugger all. Um, and it's seriously bugger all compared to subcontractors. Depends on what the subcontract is, but the subcontractors could be up to seven times the profit margin of what a, a head contractor has. Mechanical electrical is a bit different because mechanical ends sub, 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 sub down the line. But the guy that is doing the work often has a, has a profit margin, and so he should. So this isn't about people are getting paid too much. This is about getting the people on board that are actually going to be able to introduce savings. So in terms of who owns savings, you need to understand two things. You need to understand when a contract is formed and you also need to understand what the initiative is. So what I've tried to, what I've tried to set out in this, it's quite complex because we're looking at here a contractual line um, to a head contractor and we're looking at a contractual line to a subcontractor. And then down this side we've got the phases of construction all the way through to operation. The way it works is like this. If we made the building more functionally efficient at the outset and we saved that $5 million that I indicated at the beginning. If we did that before a contract is let, the owner will get that money. He will save that money. He won't actually know he saved that money because there's no contract in place. So this is in, in terms of selling the story of him, really what you're selling is you're not going to pay that extra money that you don't know you're going to pay. <laughs> it's hard. Um, whereas if he has led a contract to a DNC contractor, it's the DNC contractor that will make that money. So in terms of looking at who saves money, they're the people that should be investing in, in improving the BIM. Um, because they're the people that are going to benefit out of it. Um, invariably, say for a block of units, if there's a contract in here, um, um, it's based on uh, things like you'll supply so many units. It doesn't sit down and say the common area is going to be 15.5 square metres per unit. So this is the difference that we see. The other end of the scale, um, if we look at uh, accurate for construction documents, um, like the South Bank example, it's the subcontractor that's going to get the lion's share of that saving. Um, in terms of the you know, green is the highest saving. The interesting thing is the designer he doesn't get too much. Mm -hmm. But it's really only what you save in terms of using the technology and how it's more productive for you. Um, so it's, I, think it, I think it's important to understand where money sits within the supply chain and then what the effect is that you're bringing by, by improving some of these initiatives. So I hope I've given you um, a bit of an insight as to what 5D is about. Um, there's no doubt that in this space we now have new skills um, and, there's, and there's also really reliable and good technology that's available there. The problem with the technology is it's extremely easy to use and it's really easy to teach. Um, what is needed is experience to make that all work because that's what gives the certainty um, and that's really what our clients are about is they're looking for certainty. Um, to get that, you need to work with people that know what they're doing and that they need to be able to leverage this technology in the best way for you. So I hope I've given you some ideas. Thank you. Well,
Yeah, if anyone wants a copy of this stuff, you can download it from the website. There's all sorts of other interesting things under this BIM advocacy thing.